Out of nowhere, the rapture happened. People just disappeared. It was very uncanny and everyone was panicking, running and screaming. So, you know, I'm going to speak about both of those points. So I basically was using a Glock for self-protection in the dream and, you know, it sucked. But I was living in shoes. It was very symbolic. It's not, I'm not saying this is how and what's going to happen exactly. But there's going to be people who will be doing that when after the rapture, the left behind will have to fend for themselves. And, you know, it'll be hard. It won't be easy at all. A lot of people will die. Brothers and sisters, this is your brother Martin. And uh, day before yesterday, I got a, a word. Oh, actually, yesterday, I got a word to record this video. And it was such a hard word that when, before I woke this morning, I asked for confirmation. No Aces video is confirmation that I'm supposed to make this hard word. So I will link it from the description below. And with that, let's get to the main part of my video. Shalom all, this is your brother Martin. And this morning I got woken up early and our Heavenly Father put it upon my heart <clears throat> that I was supposed to record a video for you with this title, The Rapture. It's not what you think it is. Now, I honestly didn't think he would ever have me record a video like this, but it makes sense uh, given what's about to happen and how unprepared the body is. So, um, I think it's probably a good idea for you to watch this video, even if you find yourself disagreeing with it, because it's a hard word. That said, let's get into it. All right. So if it's not what you think it is, what really is it? Well, <clears throat> for you to understand the point that he's asked me to make, we first have to talk about some of the lies that are being fed uh, through the doctrine of Christian liberty. And if you live in the United States uh, and w watch any kind of sporting event for sure, but probably lots of other things, you will see a commercial. And I will um, only play a few seconds of it uh, under fair use uh, to prove my point, and I'm calling it the he gets us deception. Um, so this he gets us deception is characterizing the Messiah as an inclusive sort of uh, guy um, versus the real Messiah in Scripture. So I just want to play you a little bit of this You've probably seen it, so a few seconds of this is just a reminder, and I will combat the perception this creates with Scripture in just a moment. Uh, so you might recognize the few seconds of this that I will play just to jog your memory. He was heartbroken because he wanted everyone to eat and be filled, not with food and wine, but with compassion. Okay, so these are nice messages, but they set up a deceit. Um, not everybody wanted to sit at his table. He's inclusive, but some people reject them. Yes, that's true. Some people reject them. But that is not to say that he wants everyone to have a seat at the table. And I will read you Luke 12. Um, and he is talking about what happens in our time when he comes at a, at a time that that no one knows, uh, with a parable. And that servant who knew his master's desire and did not prepare, nor did according to his desire, shall be beaten with many stripes. This is Yahushua, our Messiah, who you know as Jesus, speaking. I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Okay? I have an immersion to be immersed with, and how distressed I am until it is accomplished. Do you think that I came to give peace on earth? I say to you, no, but rather division. All right, he, does, he talks about division. Father shall be divided against son, son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Does this sound like someone who's inclusive and wants to give a seat to everybody at the table? It is not, uh, it is not the way it's portrayed in your churches. And uh, to, 
and and I mean, this is why I had to leave my church. And I can't say that anybody's ever asked me why I left that church, but this is why I had to leave that church because they just lie to you about the nature of the Father and the Messiah. Now, I'm going to play a small amount. I will link this from the description. Uh, this uh, last day's messenger uh, word she received this morning, just a piece of it, so that you understand just how exasperated our Heavenly Father is that people still don't hear after he has sent all these things to try and bring us to repentance because they're completely deluded by the nice messages in the doctrine of Christian liberty and refuse to believe that they are accountable and that they will just be given a seat at the table. So listen to this. Like those in the boat that Jonah boarded, John 1.16, I thought, that when I began to send my tempests, winds and gales, and my storms, men would fear the Lord exceedingly. But this was not so. I sent plague, I sent storm, I sent terror, and I sent calamity. I have even killed your children with death. Revelation 2.23 As my word said, I would. Were not many in my body deceived into jabbing their children? You do realize that I said these things to my church, and not to the world. Surely by now men would begin to fear their God. Not only fear, but fear me exceedingly, especially as so many can now plainly see what is about to be unleashed upon your shores. Instead of fear, what did I see? I saw my people giving all glory to men. They believe that wicked men and wicked men alone are the cause of all their woes. They think that it's up to them to stop the wicked by simply exposing them and rising up to fight them, and all will be well. I send storms, and they call it weather modification. I have sent floods all over the face of the earth this month. This is a sign, a pattern, a type to indicate exactly what season you are in. As in the days of Noah, so it is today. No, I will not completely destroy the earth by water. But I send the floodwaters in many places to warn of what is about to come. And even now is here. I sent plague. You get the point. So this is why, uh, why our Heavenly Fathers asked me to make this video. Because what's going to happen very soon is going to be horrific. And when you are still here because you don't understand the rapture, you are going to be in great fear, and he wants you to find this message so you understand that you need to repent and endure what is about to happen. So I'm going to talk about three groups for you to, that you need to understand to understand the rapture. These are the 7,000 elect, the 144,000 covered in Revelation 7, and the great multitude also covered in Revelation 7. Okay, uh, the point of this is to not be deceived and we're dealing with evil ones and principalities. From the last video, you know, they operate in very long timelines with information you don't have. They want you afraid so that you fall away. They lie and they're about to launch big lies. I will come back to this uh, before I finish. So let's get on to the three groups. Um, and specifically the ones you really need to understand are the 7,000 elect. Um, these are referenced in 1 Kings 19.18, where it says, And I shall leave 7,000 in Israel whose knees have not bowed to Baal. Baal being the entity referred to by Lord, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Um, it is also referred to in Romans 11.4. Uh, when it says, what is the answer of Elohim? I have left for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. And these are the elect. So there are seven assemblies. There are 7,000 elect right here. And that means a thousand from each assembly. You know, there are other analyses of these that you can find out here. This one, Bible study for life, has one that talks about Romans 11.4 and all those things. 
But it makes this claim, we know there will be more than 7,000 because it's not literal, it's figurative. Number seven means all these things. No, no, it's literal. It is literal. And then this study goes on to claim 1% of the, the world's elect. No, that's not true. Um, 7,000 divided by 8.1 billion is way less than 1%. It's way less than one one hundredth of a percent. So this is why you might be deceived, because if you think that this number out of 8.1 billion, which is many millions, is the, um, the number in the rapture, then you are going to be sorely disappointed. Uh, and this is why he's asked me to make this video, because after uh, the stuff happens and you uh, are thinking about this, you are going to say, well, why am I still here? And that's why you're still here. I will show you a Bible code that confirms this. Again, this is a statistical anomaly in a 3000 year old book that I represent as artwork, but you might see that it has some significance. I'll show you this after I talk about the other two groups. Those are the 144,000 and the great multitude. Um, now, because in Revelation 7, I use a different uh, translation, the Institute for Scriptural Research, it says a great crowd, but in your Bible it probably says the great multitude. Um, and so uh, John the Revelator sees this great multitude um, and asks who they are. And he said, uh, Master, you know, and he said to me, these are those coming out of the great distress, tribulation, having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, he, he sees them, a great multitude that no one was able to count because it was so large, out of all nations and tribes, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, dressed in white robes. So where is he? He is in the Spirit, in heaven, having a vision. So all these people standing there are no longer living. Um, so when he says those are those coming out of the great distress, tribulation, having washed their robes, these people are now in the spirit. That means they are no longer living on the earth. And that is the great multitude, as opposed to the 144,000, which is mentioned before then, that says seal, the remnant um, so that they are not harmed when the harm goes out on the earth. And the number of those who were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of the tribes of Israel, 12,000 for each of the 12 tribes. And they're listed here, right? 12,000 for Asher, 12,000 for Naphtali, 12,000 for Manasseh. So they're listed here, um, right? So there's the, this group, 144,000, and then there's this group, the great multitude, that have come out of the great distress slash tribulation and are now in the spirit. Why? Because they were killed in the great tribulation. So um, those are the three groups. And the only ones subject to what you might call the rapture are the 7,000 elect, because those are the workers of the harvest. Everybody else, this 144,000 and this great multitude, that's the harvest. Believe me or don't, but that's the message he's asked me to make so that I properly set your expectations. And I'm not doing this to scatter the flock. Uh, if, if you are caught up, good for you. Uh, then you don't need this message. But if you are not caught up and you are still here when the shit is hitting the fan, you'll now know why. And you will at least understand what you need to do to endure because that's how you spend eternity in paradise and it's worth it. So um, with that said, I'm going to show you a code to, to validate what I just said. Um, and you can take it uh, however you want. As I say, I'm just a messenger. Uh, and, and the point of all of this is that they're about to launch some big lies and they want you afraid. So what happens 
when you've been fed this lie about how you're not going to be here for all the nasty shit, and then the nasty shit happens and you're still here, they're going to feed you an explanation and feed you a solution. So I'm just going to say that alien narrative you're about to hear is a lie because they lie and they're launching these big lies. So this will be the subject of my next video because I'm going to um, unravel that lie so that when they launch it, you'll be able to see through it. Uh, and before I uh, close this one, let me show you the Bible code. And here's the code table that I showed last time, which was basically when the uh, shite hits the fan that you're going to want to hide for a little if you're part of the remnant. So I'm not going to go through this code again. You can look at the last video where I did this, but it has some elements about what it means and when it happens. Heshvan being a month that we are still in. Uh, and this was the code table. So again, uh, not redoing this table. Go look in the last video, but uh, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then I'm going to show you a table about the 7,000, which are the first fruits. They are the workers of the harvest. So this is the table. Uh, this is encoded in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 12, where 7,000 is in the plain text. I'm going to show you some very interesting things about this table. So first off, all of the years that we're talking about that I've said in my timelines in previous videos are in here. This is why these workers, the ones doing, are doing them in every one of these years. Um, the workers are the first fruits of the harvest. They are the ones doing the harvest. They have been anointed in the end of days to do this harvest. And you see it's in the USA for a large part. There is a date encoded that I have grayed out. It is the same date shown in the tables for the event that I was talking about, the nukes. Um, and so it's very telling, same dates in all of these tables. Um, so where do I get the terms? Well, so this is not in the same place. This is in 2 Kings, but 7,000 is encoded uh, in the Bible talking about a group of people. And I showed you how the 7,000 relates to the elect because it lists that there will be 7,000 elect. Um, and there in 2 Kings, um, these were described here. Um, and then from various places, I've gotten the terms first fruit of the harvest and the ones doing, meaning the workers. And that's how I got the terms for that table that you see. Um, now, what's really interesting when I show you how it was encoded in Chronicles is that 7,000, again, is in the plain text. And one of those several years goes straight through it in a very strong relationship relating that 7,000 to our time. This term, Hey, Tao, Shin, Hey, Dalit, is 5784, the Hebrew equivalent of 2024 Gregorian. And we are still in that year in Heshvan. Um, and for those of you who are paying attention to what the Jews say about their civil calendar, yeah, it's six months off. It's not the right calendar. I described that and talk about it in the comments in the last video and the video before that. So that's old news. Go back and look at those if you still have questions about that. Um, all right, so let's go now to the actual table so I can show it to you. Here we have the 7,000 in the plain text with 2024 encoded across it. Uh, we have in the same line connecting to that is anointed, who are anointed, the workers, the ones doing. Um, what are they doing? They're doing the harvest. Uh, actually, I didn't, um, uh, I didn't uh, annotate that. I believe that's over here on the left-hand side. Um, and it's in the USA, in Heshvan. And they are the first fruits. So that's this top blue term wrapping. And then it's in the end of days. So that's below that term. You can see the, uh, the harvest terms here. The, um, the kuf in harvest and the ayin, or no, sorry, the zadi in harvest here and then the yod, and then the resh. So this is harvest right here, this green term that I haven't annotated. 
<clears throat> so these are the ones anointed, the 7,000 that are anointed for the harvest, right? Uh, they, they, they cross each other. Uh, with a year in there, with first fruits, end of days in the USA in Heshvan. So pretty, pretty incredible table um, to provide what I consider to be a confirmation of the matter that I have been told to make this video about. Now, there are those that are going to say, you know, blasphemy, the whole church is going to be raptured. I, like I said, I'm a messenger. You believe whatever you want. Um, the only real thing in question in Revelation 7, the 144,000 are mentioned, the great multitude are also mentioned and described, and the great multitude clearly are not raptured because they are killed in the tribulation, and that's how they appear. And they are and the and the angel tells John that's what happened to them. They went through the, the, the great tribulation. So clearly the great multitude are not raptured. And we know that the workers of the harvest, being the first fruits, are removed. And whether you call it rapture or not, it's a translation just like it happened to Enoch. Same thing that happened to Enoch happens to the elect. That's in Scripture in several places, including in the book of Enoch. I won't get into that. The only question is what happens to the 144,000. They're listed. It doesn't say that they get translated. So the, 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 the answer is, I don't know. I don't know the mind of Ehua. I can't say for sure. Um, the only reason I say I doubt that they are included is that it says that the harvest is vast and the workers are few. And so and in saying few, I'm being the most conservative version of few, saying it's the 7,000. That said, even if the 144,000 were included, this is the percentage, 144,000 divided by 8.1 billion, it's not 1%. It's like 1.7100 thousandth of a percent. So for anybody in the Christian church that thinks the church is being raptured, even if the 144,000 is part of it, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of a percent. And so this is why I've been instructed to give you this video, so that when you are here and they are trying to get you to believe some alien crazy story as the reason why you're still here, that you will not buy into that. And I will explain all of that and reveal it in the next video so that you uh, can see it coming, so that you're better prepared and you don't give in to fear. So what can you do in the meantime? Because this is coming quickly. The best thing you can do, get on your knees, cry out to Yahushua and ask him for deliverance. Go back a couple videos where I show you how to pray. Say that prayer. Um, you know, admit that you have been deceived. Um, you know, in Jeremiah, they say, in those days, they will say, our fathers inherited lies. Well, guess what? Your fathers inherited lies and passed them on to you. Even I passed them on to my children because I was not woken up basically in time uh, to pass on the truth before they were in college. So I have my own issues to deal with. Um, so I understand your pain and I feel it. Uh, but that doesn't make what I'm telling you any less true. And, you know, it does say in Matthew 9 and in Luke 10, the harvest indeed is vast, yet the workers are few, right? Um, so whether that's 144,000 few or 7,000 few, it's few, really few. And we know the great multitude does not come through it because it says it in Revelation 7, that they came through the great tribulation and they're in the spirit, thus they lost their lives in the great tribulation. So with that, brothers and sisters, you know, I know it's a hard word. Uh, the other thing that you can do is share this word. I know, you know, you might share it with people who will think that I am nuts, and that's fine, because when the shite does hit the fan, they're going to remember, and then they'll come back and watch it, and it might do some good. So please, 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 um, these things are coming quickly. Getting mad at politicians is not going to help. Uh, going to the ballot box isn't going to help. None of this is going to help. It is the will of Yahuwah that this happens. Uh, and, and, and that's all I can say. Uh, so I, you know, only he can open your eyes. Uh, and only he can open the eyes of the ones you care about. Like I said, I have my own family who, and I've been ministering to them, me, and they, they do not have their eyes opened and I've been praying about it. 
The blind cannot see, no matter how badly you want them to see, because they are blind. You cannot make a blind person see just because you want them to see. They have to want to see, and then he must intercede for them to allow them to see. Which is why, if you realize you've been deceived, you need to call out to him, and you need to repent. So with that, I will leave it with you, brothers and sisters. I know it's a hard word. Uh, I do wish you shalom, and... Um, be well. And in the next video, I'm going to point out some of the tricks of the enemy so that, uh, so that you have that to use when these things come to pass. Shalom all.